I'm going to start off by just giving a brief overview of some of the research work that has been done trying to understand what the overall macroeconomic consequences of Brexit are likely to be. And I'm going to focus particularly on work that tries to understand how Brexit will affect the UK economy through changes in trade, which we think are likely to be the main source of economic changes coming out of Brexit. Um, now, I kind of want to start with a disclaimer, which is that because of the huge amount of uncertainty around the whole Brexit process, understanding what the economic effects are going to be and you know, any attempt to forecast what the economic effects of Brexit are going to be is a little bit of a fool's errand. Right? And that re re results partly from our kind of inevitably imperfect understanding of the way economies function. But the bigger source of uncertainty here is obviously we don't yet know what Brexit means. Right? And having voted to leave the EU, the UK now faces a choice about what kind of Brexit it's going to follow. Right? And in particular, from an economic perspective, I think the kind of first order question we have to answer is whether we're going to stay within Europe's single market or not. If we stay within the single market, it means that kind of existing trade relations between the UK and, and Europe in both goods industries and service industries will be, they'll be disrupted somewhat, but they'll be relatively similar to how they, they currently are. But staying in the single market also means continuing to allow free movement of labour between the UK and the EU. And it means the UK would continue to be subject to the EU's economic regulations and continue to make contributions into the EU budget as it does at the moment. On the other hand, if we leave the single market, that will create a much bigger disruption in trading relations between the UK and the EU and much bigger increases in trade costs uh, between the two blocks. What many people might then see as the advantage of leaving the EU is it, of, sorry, of leaving the single market was that you could then potentially impose restrictions on, on migration. You could then also you know, potentially be less subject to EU economic regulation and it would reduce the contributions into the EU budget. So that's the kind of big picture decision the UK now needs to make. And inevitably, the economic consequences of Brexit are going to be dependent on which of those choices we make. So I'm going to kind of summarise the work that's been done looking at what the economic consequences of Brexit might be. And I'll try and kind of you know, highlight how we're going to potentially come to different answers depending on what Brexit ends up looking like. So... Analyzing the consequences of Brexit is, is not an easy challenge. Right? Ideally, as a researcher, what you would like to do is you would like to go back and look at a time when an, another economy that looks like the UK left the EU and compare what happened to that economy to some other economy that looks like the UK and didn't leave the EU. Right? Now, that's obviously never happened. There's no historical precedent for what we're about to go through. And that makes you know, the challenge of, of, of analyzing what's going to happen much more difficult. So there have been kind of three approaches researchers have um, taken whoops, to try to answer this question. The first is to kind of look back historically at um, what happened to countries after they joined the EU. Right? So it's not obvious that leaving the EU is simply the flip side of joining the EU. But perhaps by looking at what happens to countries after they join the EU, we can get some insight into the economic consequence of EU membership. So that's one approach. Another kind of more theoretical approach, which economists have taken, is to take an economic model of the global economy. So essentially, you know, a theoretical construct that is designed to simulate how the global economy works. And within such a model, we can look at what are the consequences of Brexit, where Brexit is going to be some increase in trade costs between the UK and the EU. And the model will then tell us what happens when we increase trade costs to trade flows and to welfare in different countries. So that's been a second approach. And then a kind of third approach, which again is more empirical, uh, looks at you know, how does the EU affect trade flows on the one hand, which is something we know a reasonable amount about. And then if you combine that with estimates of how do trade flows affect incomes, that's going to tell us something about he how EU membership affects economic outcomes. 
So let me just speak briefly about kind of what people have found using those three approaches. So first off, kind of you know, historical evidence. Um, simple sort of casual observation. If you go back and look at what happened to the UK economy after it joined the EEC as it was then in 1973, from then up until the financial crisis in 2007, was a, it was a very good period for the UK compared to other kind of major European economies such as France and Germany. The UK grew more quickly than its kind of major comparison UK countries during that period. Right? Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that that is the consequence of EU membership. There could be lots of other economic shocks that are going on at the same time that affect the EU's economic outcomes, and it's impossible to fully disentangle the effects of those shocks. But to the extent that people are, are able to, the kind of lesson coming out of this line of research is certainly that the UK benefited from its membership of the EU. Right? So probably the most sophisticated paper in this line is this, there's a paper by Campos, Coricelli and Moretti, and their conclusion is that UK GDP per capita was 8.6% higher 10 years after it joined the EU than it otherwise would have been. Right? So they're finding quite large positive effects on economic outcomes of, of EU membership. Second line of work that I, I mentioned, so the more theoretically grounded work. Right? The disadvantage of this line of work is obviously it's, it's less data-based, it's less empirically driven. The advantage is that you can potentially take account of all the different um, forces and effects that go into affecting economic outcomes. So we've done some work on this uh, that I did together with some colleagues at, at LSE, where what we do is we look at what happens when tariff and non-tariff barriers between the UK and the EU increased uh, as a result of, of Brexit. And what's nice also about this line of work is we can kind of consider the two different scenarios I mentioned earlier. So we simulate what we call an optimistic scenario where the UK stays in the single market and has relations with the EU similar to those Norway currently has. Right, so Norway is, is part of the single market, but it faces some, um, some increased trade costs with the EU because it's not part of the EU's customs union. Then we also consider a more pessimistic case, which kind of essentially simulates what people have been calling a hard Brexit where the UK simply quits the EU and starts trading with Europe under World Trade Organization rules, which would mean that uh, there would be increased tariffs between the UK and the EU, and also a bigger increase in, in, in non-tariff barriers. What we find in this um, study is that the, the optimistic case, UK GDP per capita, goes down by 1.3%, and in the pessimistic case, by 2.6%. So again, we're finding that Brexit is bad for the overall economy, but the effects are smaller than the effects estimated from some of the historical evidence. Then the final line of work I wanted to, to talk about, and in a way I find this line of work perhaps the most um, convincing, because it's, it's kind of more convincingly data-driven than any of the other work. And this is a two-step process. So step one... Let's look at how when you join the EU, it affects your trade flows. So when countries join the EU, how does it affect their trade with other EU countries relative to their trade with the rest of the world? Right? And there's kind of, you know, we have good data on trade and on countries changing EU membership to allow us to, to address this question. And what it suggests is that the EU is good for trade. And in particular, that joining the EU relative to just being in a free trade agreement with the EU boosts your trade with other EU countries by around a quarter. Okay. So then the question is, if this is the increase in trade, what does that mean for overall living standards? So the second step of this analysis is to use some independently obtained estimates of how changes in trade affect GDP and living standards. Right. So there's a, you know, a wide body of evidence that increased trade on aggregate raises economic output and raises living standards by allowing countries to specialise in the things that they're better at doing. And so when we combine these two sets of estimates, what we end up with is that Brexit 
And here the kind of Brexit we're talking about is going to a free trade agreement with the EU, so outside the single market, but having some kind of trade agreement, that this would cut UK GDP per capita by between 6.3 and 9.5%. Right? So again, it's negative and it, it, it's, it's slightly larger than the more theoretically driven estimates. So summing up, I think you, know, you want to look at any economic analysis of what Brexit is going to mean with a large pinch of salt. There's a lot of uncertainty here and economists don't perfectly understand how the world works. That said, there is a very broad consensus within economists who have looked at this issue that Brexit will be bad for the UK economy. We don't know how exactly how bad. I've shown you estimates that range from falls in GDP to 1.3% to 10%. Right, so 1.3% is relatively small, 10% obviously is a much bigger hit, and it would be a bigger hit than the hit to GDP during the financial crisis. So that would be a fairly substantial fall. Okay. So I mean, I think what we can you know, take away from this kind of, of work is you know, the fact that Brexit is likely to be bad for the UK economy doesn't necessarily mean we shouldn't Brexit, right? Clearly there are other factors that go into to making that decision. But I think when we're thinking about whether Brexit is a good idea and what kind of Brexit the UK wants, which is the policy debate that we should be having in this country at the moment, we need to acknowledge that there are costs from increased trade barriers. And to some extent, kind of what we face when thinking about when we want to stay in the single market or not, is that if we want more control over immigration and over regulation, that's fine, but there's a trade-off there. And the trade-off is that there's going to be a greater cost in terms of reduced trade and reduced living standards. And so kind of, you know, the question is, where do we want to sit along that trade-off? And I think that's, that's an answer that we don't have it yet, and it's an answer that the referendum didn't help us. It's a question that the referendum didn't help us answer. So I'll stop there for now. Thank you.